Hey, I'm Cece Summers, and welcome back to Lover's Trophy, the game where the trophy is that you get to spend the rest of your life with a serial killer that may snap and kill you at any moment. I don't know about you, but that sounds like my ideal kind of life. <laughs> we have got eight endings left. I'm not really sure what else we could possibly do with this man, <laughs> but I guess we will find out. Hopefully, it'll be more creative ways of murdering his face off. I hope that we get the chance to throw him in the body pit. All right, so it's time for me to do what I do best. Click shit until something new happens. So I'm gonna go do that. And whenever I encounter something new, I'll bring you back. Hi, welcome back. Hope that wait wasn't too long for you. So this ending, we decided to struggle, get free, right? But instead of going and finding a weapon, we decided, well, I'll just put my hands back behind my back and just pretend as if I'm still, you know, tied up. So we're attacking this man with our bare hands. And I am positive this is going to work out very well in our favor. You lunge, deciding to pounce. He's startled, eyes widening as he quickly moves the plate. It cracks against your head. Oh no! He stares at you with a sick sort of horror. The plate falls out of his hands, clanking against the thin rug on his floor. Please, I'm sorry! He pauses. Honestly, what could we have done in that moment? Did we just, like, go out, claws out? Like, what, what could we have possibly done? You can tell he might be swayed. He leans back, grabbing something from the mass of covers on his bed. It's a gun. He aims it at your head, and before you can do anything, he shoots. And he scored. Ten points through the head. I asked him, what's your name? Apparently we've never done the surprise response. And he said, Jack, without the C, though I do hope to see you later. I think my affection might be higher this time than it was last time because this is the same scene as earlier. You know, like we decided to get free, but then just sit there with no weapon and pretend like we were still bound, and then attack him with our bare hands and beg for forgiveness, but instead of shooting us in the face, this happens. He pauses. You can tell he might be swayed. Well. He sighs before looking closer at you. Prove it. Oh no. Can I just go back to the one where he shoots me in the face? His face is flushed and he sets the plate down. Prove it. At first you don't understand. At least until he pulls his shirt off. Jesus. Oh. Then he seems to fiddle with the waistband of his pants. Oh no. Oh yeah. Alright, Kool-Aid man. Why do I keep doing this to myself? <laughs> um, he asks, What do you think? <laughs> he sort of laughs while looking down at you, hand resting up in your hair. Ugh, oh no. So I have the choice to do what he asks or say no. So you know I'm gonna say no. <laughs> I don't wanna do this. No. You shake your head furiously. Get wrecked. No! Nasty ass. You're at a loss of words. He appears to be somewhat disappointed. Please, just let me go. His hand tightens in your hair. Uh-oh. Apparently we're, we can't bite it. So it says. He said, don't say another word, you useless piece of shit. Well, Jack, that is not very friendly of you. Oh, now he shoots me. Now he shoots me. Now we get shot in the face. <sighs> we 
could have just skipped that whole thing and just gone straight to this part. <laughs> Well, glad we could help. <sighs> I hate that it always has to come to this. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll just do that. Wait, he grabs something from his desk and reaches behind you. He duct tapes your hands back together. Be right back. He's only gone for a minute before he's back, in the middle of putting a new shirt on. I should get rid of you. But you've sort of proven yourself. Then you notice he's holding something. A rag? Not again. But before you can do anything, he grabs you, shoving the cloth against your nose. Does he have some sick fetish for chloroform or something? <laughs> Wouldn't put it past him. You don't remember much, just the feeling of trying to fight back. Your eyes spring open. I swear to God, if we wake up in the body pit, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> oh, God. Where am I? You try to open the cage, but your hands are stuck tape behind your back. You're helpless, but exhausted. Even with the amount of knocked out sleep you've gotten, sleeping in the crate is hard. Okay. We're not going to do that because we want our sanity, right? <laughs> So I guess we're just back here then. Okay. I'll let you know if anything interesting happens. Okay, so I keep going back to like the very beginning and choosing different combinations uh, at the gas station and seeing how that affects later on in the game. Um, so in this one, it was still the same, like we didn't attack, we accepted the food, we flirted with him, like we've listened to everything he's asked us to do, but it led to something new, I guess. He smiles, eyes widening as he picks you up. Oh, I can't put you back in there. He kisses your forehead. You're just so cute. Thanks. Can I trust you enough? Yes. Of course. He seems to be asking himself more than you. He carries you down the hallway and into his bedroom. Then he lays down with you, looking you over. I think you're so cute. <laughs> Thanks. You don't feel cute. You feel sticky and gross. He holds his arms around you, grip strong. You can't move. He nuzzles his face into your shoulder. He's so big against you. Is he asleep? Already? I mean, he was pretty drunk earlier. So that makes sense. You can't help but be nervous at the thought of him completely sober. Let's get out of here. Let's get the fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. You squirm a little once you're sure he's asleep. His arms are heavy and tight around you. Then, with some maneuvering, you manage to get free. Fuck you. Yeah. Your heart begins to beat as you take a look at him. He's like a slumbering giant, albeit, in a way, a more fucked up one. Well, I mean, he did not grind your bones to make his bread, so I feel like they're about the same. You aren't sure what to do. You decide to check his bedroom first, better than you could the first time. Ooh, so do we think the gun is still on the desk, or is it back in his dresser? I guess let's go desk and then dresser. You explore his desk, noticing a laptop on top. You slowly open it, taking a peek. Surprisingly to you, it's locked. Huh. You turn down, opening the desk drawers. You find a couple of photos, one of what seems to be him and a woman. They look similarly, like as if she smiled, she'd be like him. You set it down, picking up a few more. College? For a moment, you didn't consider him educated. <laughs> who can who can blame her? Who can blame her? <laughs> Just a couple of photos that seem to be at parties, then a few older ones. You only assume it's him because it's written on the back. Family photos. A man's face is scratched out. Strange. 
a weird feeling comes over you. You slowly look up at the wall. In the dark, you didn't notice, but now you can. There's pictures all over his wall next to the posters. Upon further look, they're all of you. Your eyes widen with horror as you look at them, your breath quickening. How long has he been stalking you? Good grief. What's interesting, though, is that... So, him and Wade obviously exist in the same universe. And Wade and, like, Wade's kidnapping and Jack's kidnapping would have been on the same day. Right? Because when we go to the park, there was, like, cops there and, um that was the day that he went and pulled all the teeth out of the dog and so I'm wondering if Jack would have been stalking you during that time and if he was would he have been like all right Wade you got this one I'll 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 find another one like why wouldn't he have like done something about it you know like if he was stalking you like, if he felt like he was genuinely stalking the love of his life, and then the love of his life got kidnapped by another person, you think he would go and find them and get you back. Although they do both have body piles, so it's very possible they have the same one, the same body pile in this man's backyard, and they're just working together. So he's like, all right, well, if she's gonna be kidnapped by anybody, might as well let it be by Wade. You remember back when you first met him back at the gas station, how he was almost startled to see you. It all makes sense. He's insane. Why is he convinced you like him? There's a photo of you at the local diner, one of you at the park, most are creep shots of you at your motel room or through the window. Holy shit. The photos are a range, some done with a Polaroid and others done with what seems to be disposable cameras. You gulp, stepping back with a bit of fear. Why is he so infatuated with you? You're startled when you feel a hand on your shoulder. Oh shit. What are you doing up, sugar? He asks tiredly as he slides his arms around you. Your heart beats hard, and you sort of tense up. I couldn't sleep. You lie, turning to face him. It's okay, honey. Is he wearing his cargo pants and belt to bed? I can't sleep sometimes, too. You stand, unsure of what to do as he watches you, keeping his arms warm and tight around you. You understand in a way he sort of caught you. You sink into his arms. You'll take this loss. Lost my will to fight. Great ending. All right, we're gonna pretend like the desk doesn't exist. You walk up to his dresser, cautiously opening a couple of drawers. Scrawled in Sharpie, they're labeled. Socks, shirts. You dig through a ton of socks and a random shirts that seem like they haven't been worn in a while. While rummaging through the second socks drawer, your hands find something solid. It's cold. You slowly pull the gun out. You think he would have put gun on, on the drawer. Socks, shirts, gun. Is it loaded? You slowly turn to face Jack. His breathing is light and his face looks non-threatening at rest. What do you do? What do you mean, what do you do? What do you mean, what do you do? Shoot him in the face. <laughs> you grow nervous, unsure of when or if he'll wake up. You approach. Shoot him. You shoot. The recoil makes your shoulder snap back. You don't have much experience with firearms. His eyes fly open and he clutches his chest. Blood blooms and he coughs. Cece? Yes? His eyes are wide and fearful, but he's smiling strangely. You shot me. Yeah, I sure did. His words slur as he blinks. Shit. He coughs up blood. You had good aim. He blinks a few more times, coiling before going still. Is he? You slowly walk up feeling strange and out of body. He lays there, eyes open and staring up at the ceiling. 
Your hands shake and you look at the gun. Then you drop it. You're free. You turn towards the door, heartbeat filling your ears as you walk. Finally, you can go. Home? Yes. You regretted it? Never. Couldn't be me. All right. So you have the choice to not shoot him. I'm wondering if what happens, like, my assumption is going to be he wakes up and sees you with the gun and is like, the fuck? What are you doing? But I don't know. Maybe we just put it back and then sneak out. I don't know. His eyes fly open and he looks at you. I knew it. I knew this little bitch would have just woken up. His lips pull into a smile, small and a bit nervous seeing the gun in your hands. He sits up slowly, putting his hands up and ahead of him. What are you doing, sweetheart? He sounds half asleep, eyes widening. We haven't practiced gun safety yet. Your heart races. You're too scared to move. He slowly gets up out of bed, walking towards you. Don't come any closer. He pauses, staggering a little as he lets out a breath. Are you going to shoot me? You gulp at his words. I love you, Cece. I hate you. No, you don't. His smile gets bigger. I... You struggle, gun shaking in your grip. I want you to let me go. He takes a step towards you, and you find your threat earlier was pretty empty. Do you really want to leave me? His face twists into a fake frown. I think you're just tired, honey. He shrugs. Maybe we should go ahead and lie down. He takes another step towards you, your hand violently flinching the gun ahead as if to threaten him. He stops, a foot or two away. I don't want you to fucking touch me. Really? That's not what you were like earlier. Don't hold that against me. <laughs> I did it so you'd let me go. Your mind scrambles to convince yourself of this. You shake the gun again, but he steps one more time. Then he grabs it from your hand. You're frozen as he holds it up high. You were so nice and needy while- Oh no, yikes. <laughs> he laughs a little, toying with the weapon in his grip. You know, this thing is loaded. You can tell by the weight. He shakes it a little, eyeing you up and down. I don't think you want to leave, or that you hate me. This right here proves it. He moves up, pulling you close. He leans his head down to look at you. Come on, Cece, you're so cute when you get like this. This little hate me bit is so amusing. He leans in and kisses the top of your head. In a strange way, you feel defeated. How is he not convinced you hate him? You should hate him. Probably because we're crazy pants. You sink against him and he squeezes you against his comfortable chest. It's okay, hun, let's get back to sleep. And then he guides you back to his large bed. I guess! All right. So we did this one, the one that makes the most sense. So I guess we'll do the one that makes no sense at all. And we'll just stay there. You cuddle up, letting out a small breath. He's warm, and you can feel his slow breathing as his chest rises and falls against your back. You feel special. And lost. If you escaped, what would you even do? You have no home. Nobody to go to. You roll over, looking up at him. At your motion, his arms squeeze tighter against you. He murmurs something. You find yourself stiffening, resting your head against his arm. You won't leave him. He's the only thing you have left. He doesn't seem all that bad. <laughs> of course not. Right? He's like, your new home. You know, you could just like, find people on the internet 
people on the internet are pretty cool. You could just find some, some people there. You don't have to be kidnapped to find a friend. <laughs> So there's multiple chances for you to attack him at the beginning of the game, right? And every time I did it, I did it with our stupid little pencil. I'm pressed about this. But every time we did it, it was with the pencil, and I never tried it without the weapon. So this is the other time that you can attack him, and I still don't have a weapon. So let's just die real quick. <laughs> You get up, attempting to somewhat sneak up and attack him. He whips around. Hey, hey, hey. You're intimidated by his sheer height as he grabs you. You know, I only had my back turned for two seconds. You squirm, mainly because it's the only thing you can do. Stop struggling. You continue to squirm in his grip. He squeezes you tighter. You're a traitor. He squeezes you even tighter. I can't breathe. You cry out with your last breath. I know. You don't deserve to. <laughs> your back cracks hard. Pain consumes you. He became a chiropractor. I've been meaning to get one of these, so <laughs> saved me some time. This is at the end, like towards the end. We um, went into the kitchen and last time we had just asked to help, we never just left, so there's a new option. Probably won't work well for us. <laughs> you find yourself a little embarrassed for some strange reason. Why did you come in here? Why did you follow him? You look away before turning around, but that was your mistake. He grabs your arm, pulling you back towards him. You're pinned against his chest, your chest to his stomach. He looks down at you. Oh, trying to run from me? He seems to be looking at your face for any signs, expressions. With what you're giving, he should notice that you're confused and startled by his grab. But right now, especially right now, he doesn't. You squirm, but despite it all, you find your fire to fight him dying. You made a mistake following him in here. He smothers your face with kisses and a snarky little grin. You know where this will go. But I guess I didn't care. <gasps> That's it. That is it. That is all of them. That is every ending. He had so, so many. <laughs> and with that, our time with Jack and Wade have come to a close. I am going to personally move as far away from this city as I possibly can, and I'm sure, I am positive, whatever other city I end up moving to will be full of really nice people that will not kidnap me and will respect my bodily autonomy and will leave me alone when I say leave me alone. And it's gonna be great. And it's gonna be amazing. And I just know that that's how it's gonna work out. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. Uh, your trophy is lifelong trauma. I hope that won't deter you from helping me with the next one though, because <laughs> I need it. <laughs> I need so much help. <laughs> but I will see y'all next time.